Good morning and welcome. Welcome to Matt Nair on Air. We are delighted to have you along today. Jane Matt Nair, Greg Bach, the surgeon of sound. Calvin is on the board coming to you from our studio in beautiful downtown Waukesha. You can call, you can text, you can always join us at 844-967-2789 or leave a comment on the live stream that you're watching on Facebook, YouTube, or the platform that Elon ruined. You can leave a comment there as well. Joining us as she does every Thursday at this time, Dr. Kristen Lyerly for a public cervix announcement. Tell everyone who is not watching the stream what your red hat says. Well, I've been getting updates from the Supreme Court and how it doesn't seem that the justices are buying into Donald Trump's claim of immunity based on their you know, reactions and questions. And so I felt inspired to wear my red hat that says, make vulvas great again. <laughs> I'd like we to just, got- <laughs> I'd like to state for the record, I'd like to state for the record I never thought they stopped being great. <laughs> That's very nice of you, Greg. We would agree with you. Once again, I'm a feminist. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, there's no better place to wear this hat because this is a place where we talk about health and some of those really sensitive topics that are problems and personal problems that you may not feel comfortable talking about. You may not even feel comfortable bringing up with your doctor, but you can ask us here because we will talk about these things. And this hat, Make Vulvas Great Again, is actually something that we got when when I worked in Minnesota at a large hospital, we had a vulvar clinic, a clinic that was specifically dedicated to treating diseases of the vulva. Oh, wow. Which is like that area on your bottom. And it was, there are lots of things that can happen to your vulva. Women just know that they feel uncomfortable, but you know, like what's going on with my bottom. So there are, these things can be diagnosed, they can be treated, but first you have to make it to the doctor to get that diagnosis so that we can help you. So we're bringing attention to the vulva today with this hat. We are pro-vulva here at Matt Nair on Air. Yes, we are. Greg, Greg was never not pro <laughs> Ever. Not, not yeah. ever. And quite seriously, and we mean this very much, no matter what question you might have, if you have a medical question, 844-967-2789. You can call, you can text. If you're not comfortable doing that, you can shoot us an email at Matt Nair on air, all one word, M-A-T-E-N-A-E-R, Matt Nair on air at civicmedia.us. Um, I did want to start off with this, Dr. Lyerly, because we got this uh, last week. Unfortunately, we didn't get it around uh, to it until uh, be, be before the end of the segment. But it was about white coat syndrome. And Wes from Middleton, listening on WRCE, says, I've been an ICU trauma nurse the better part of a decade, but I still get high strung when I go to the doctor. I fear no white coat at work. And yet, for some reason, my doctor's office makes me so antsy, my blood pressure ticks up 30 to 40 points. This is a wow. real thing. It is a real thing. My mother had it. Yeah. Well, and you have to think if you going to the doctor makes you that stressed out that your blood pressure goes up like that, what else in your life happens that makes your blood pressure go up like that? How often is your blood pressure actually like that? Because you're not checking it all the time. You know, there are ways that we can continuously monitor your blood pressure, but they are pretty invasive and you usually have to be in an inpatient setting to do that. If you had a blood pressure cuff at home, that would really give you a much more accurate assessment of what is the big picture of what's happening with your blood pressure. If you're just chilling out, you know, getting some work done, you're relaxed, your blood pressure is normal, most of the time, you're probably okay. But if things happen in your life, you have an argument with your partner, something stressful is happening in your world, and you take your blood pressure and you notice that it's elevated, this might mean that it's more than what we call white coat hypertension. You can't just write it off as something that only happens in those little isolated, you know, once a year when you go to the doctor, hopefully you do go to the doctor at least once a year for your preventive care. But if you are having more blood pressure issues, that puts more stress on your heart and it makes it more likely that you could have a heart attack or a stroke. Now, importantly, February is heart month. 
And this is that month that it's really important for all of us to know heart disease is the number one killer of men and women. So if this is one thing that you can do, know what's going on with your blood pressure. Don't just dismiss it as white coat hypertension, white coat blood pressure problems, but really get a sense of what's going on with your blood pressure. That will give your heart a break. If you need to get on some sort of medication, if you need to cut sodium out of your diet, if you need to do some other sort of a lifestyle thing to make yourself healthier, to you know, increase your longevity and your wellness for the rest of your life, then let's do it. And that's you're you're so right, Dr. Lyerly. And I'm I'm embarrassed to admit this, but I will admit this. I shoved off my blood pressure problems for years. Years mm-hmm. and years and years. My mother had blood pre- had, has high, had high blood pressure. My sister has high blood pressure. This kind of runs in our family. I ignored it and shoved it off until about two and a half years ago when I went in for my annual and she took my BP and she looked at me and she said, do we have your medical power of attorney on hand? Oh, wow. That's powerful. And I was like, oh my God, it's that bad that you are asking me who is going to take over when I'm dead. So, and I started blood pressure pills. I take two pills. They're cost like four bucks each a month. Blood pressure medication for the most part, Dr. Lyerly is relatively inexpensive, right? It depends on On, the medication that you're on. Yeah. And there are lots of different types of blood pressure medication. There are lots of different things along the pathway, different ways that we can intervene. So even if you try something and you don't like it, it doesn't work for you for whatever reason, we can try something else. And importantly, you probably didn't know you had a blood pressure problem. You probably in the back of your head thought to yourself, Maybe I do because I've got this whole family history, but I feel fine. Yes. And you'll probably feel fine even if you do have a blood pressure problem, but you'll feel fine until you don't, until it becomes a crisis, until your heart is tired and worn out and that muscle has been working so hard for so long. So this is one of those places where we can intervene early, get you on a medication or some lifestyle changes that can truly make a difference. And it doesn't, it's not a life sentence. It doesn't mean you have to be on a blood pressure medication. There are other things that we can do before we get to that point for many people. Absolutely. It's exercise, right? It's quitting smoking. It's cutting down on alcohol intake. All of those things. If you, if you are really anti-pill and that was my thing, it's like, I don't take pills. I've never taken pills. I'd be a terrible junkie. I don't like to take pills. Um, (laughs) But but, Junkies get over it. Right. But uh, (laughs) no, it, it really is crucially important and ignoring it. You're not doing yourself. You're certainly not doing your loved ones any favors. Mm-hmm. Going, but it's hard. It, it you know, is like hard. we talked about this last week. We talked about how hard it is just to get to the doctor because sometimes it's just nice to live in your little, you know, dome of ignorance where you everything is fine until you go and find out that everything really isn't fine. And maybe you do need to take a pill, or maybe you do need to do something differently. That it's that fear of the unknown and that not wanting to get there that prevents a lot of people from just going in and getting that that screening done that can really make a difference in the long run. Dr. Kristen Lyerly joins us every Thursday at this time for public service announcement. You can always call or text if you have a question at 844-967-2789. Going back though, Dr. Lyerly, for for folks who do have this white coat syndrome, you go to the doctor, your BP skyrockets. Is there any, I mean, do you meditate before you go into the doctor's office? What, What can you do to Try and calm yourself down a little bit. You can, but you know, again, what other things in your life make your blood pressure go up like that? You know that going to the doctor gets you all worked up because they take your blood pressure there. But what if you're in a stressful traffic environment? What if you have difficult interactions with your boss? What is your blood pressure then? And what are you going to do to keep your blood pressure in the normal range then? When your blood pressure gets above 160, that top number, which is the number that when your heart squeezes to squeeze that blood out of your heart into your arteries, that's the number that that reflects. The bottom number reflects the filling number as your heart opens up and all the blood comes back in from your veins. So it's the systolic squeeze 
squeeze and the diastolic relaxation. If your numbers get above 160 over 110, you're in stroke territory. And it doesn't matter whether you're having white coat hypertension in your doctor's office or you're driving down the freeway. If you're stressed out and your blood pressure goes up like that, you are in danger. That's terrifying. I got to go to the doctor. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to come and pay a house call to you, I'm, Greg, I'm and not, bring my cuff. And I'm not even, I'm not even kidding either. Like it's, it, it's scaring me listening to you talk because, uh, my mother's side of the family strokes, heart attacks. I am very overweight. I am very out of shape. I don't sleep right. I don't eat right. I don't treat myself with respect. When is the last time you went to the doctor? We'll get to that later. Oh, let's <laughs> look at him brushing us off. No, Dr. I mean, I, trust me, I'll give you Bridget's phone number right now, and she will give you every excuse I've given her not to go to the doctor. Uh, and I'm now getting to the point, and with every year that creeps up, I get more and more scared that I'm going to be driving down the road or walking or sitting on the couch, and I will be dead. I know that's very heavy. I, I don't think you're alone. And Dr. Lyerly, I, I don't think Greg is alone in, in mm. avoiding the doctor. Papa Rico, even on even on our street yard, says some of us avoid stress so much so as to not even go to the doctor. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I just, yeah, I, I, I know what I need to do. I know what I need to do. I've done it before. We'll get there. It's just, I'm so tired it'll all be, the time. It, it'll, it, well, we're going to get there. But I can't get there. I got to be there because that's what I keep telling myself. I'll get there. I'll do it. Next week I'll go to the I'll go to the Y for 30 minutes. And that doesn't it's happen. Not, it's not that easy though. And it's a vicious cycle. Yeah. Because if you're not sleeping well, that actually puts you at risk of having higher blood pressure and diabetes and heart issues, which then puts you at risk of not sleeping well. So it's all tied together. Mm -hmm. The sleep, the eating, the movement, all of those things, the family history. Yes. I'm coming to Milwaukee. I'm coming to Milwaukee with my blood pressure cuff and we're going to do a physical right in studio. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dr. cool. Then nothing embarrassing about that Dr. for me. Dr. Kristen Lyerly <laughs> is here. If you have a question, 844-967-2789. Cindy from Appleton. Don't hang up. We will return. This is Matt Nair on air coming to you across the Civic Media Radio Network. And welcome to Matt Nair on air. Jane Matt Nair, Greg Bach, Calvin, coming to you live from our studio in downtown Waukesha. And just a reminder to download the Civic Media app. It is a wonderful app. And how much does it cost, Greg? Uh, it's uh, free 99. It is free. Free. It is absolutely free. And you can listen all across the network to all of our stations all across Wisconsin. And if you have the app, you can uh, call and uh, text directly from the app, too, which is a pretty snappy Feature, if you ask me. Uh, Dr. Kristen Lyerly is here for our public service announcement. If you have a question, if you have a comment, 844-967-2789. Cindy from Appleton, thank you for your patience, Cindy, and thank you for listening and joining. What did you want to ask the doctor? Hello. Well, uh, first of all, I'd like to say I don't have white coat syndrome when it goes to the doctor. I have it when I go to the dentist because I'm always wondering, okay, with this cleaning, because I get my cleaning every six months, what are they going to find going on in my teeth now? Because, you know, it seems like root canals and bad teeth are becoming more prevalent as I get older. And I don't think people understand how important your overall health, your oral health is. So that's where I get the white coat syndrome is at the dentist's office. I, I, I feel that, Cindy. I really I'm... do. Thank you so much for calling. And she's right. I, I think... You, you develop more dental issues as you get older. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. And oral health is connected to so heart. many different aspects of your general health. Yeah. Yep. Your heart, for me, as a person who takes care of pregnant people, it if you have bad oral health, you're at a higher risk of 
preterm delivery and other medical complications of your pregnancy. So it is really important. Cindy, I'm so glad that you go in every six months for your cleaning. I do too. And I, I find too. myself clenching my fists when I'm there and they're like in my mouth. And then I think to myself, this is level setting for me as a gynecologist to have this person like cleaning my my mouth orifice because when I am in someone else's orifice, it's not comfortable for them either. So it is, yeah, it's we little, all have those. That moments. was the greatest poem I've heard since weather poetry this morning. It's like a, <laughs> you had to be there. It's like a little doctor reset exactly, for you, though. That's, exactly. That's, that's really. I, I have a friend who didn't go to the dentist for over twenty years, and <gasps> for the past two and a half years, he's been going fairly regularly with a plan with this dental team and he's getting, get he's getting their cavities filled, teeth replaced. I mean, like, like major surgery construction done. And they're so proud of him. Oh, I bet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Tom from Grafton is on the line. Good morning, Tom. Did you have a question for Dr. Lyerly? Sir. Hi ladies and gentlemen. Um, I, I missed about the first 15 minutes of this important program. And I was wondering, um, I know you used to replay on Saturday afternoon, but I think that's over now, right? Because you've got... It, we will have a podcast available for Best Of. How, how do I do the podcast? Um, you just go just go to civicmedia.us, click where it says shows in the upper right-hand corner. You can download the episode on our show page, Matt and Air on Air, or you can go to wherever you get your podcast and you can subscribe to the show. And if you subscribe and get uh, delivered, it will download every new episode for you, so you don't have to worry about that. I've, I've never done that in my life. I don't know how to do that, but um, get, uh, get a, find a younger person. Calvin will send an, uh, over another resident <laughs> young person, and and we'll help you get that figured out. We've only got a couple of minutes, Tom. What what was your question for Doctor Lowerly? Well, I I wanted to say that um, I I too am starting to deal with blood pressure, but um, also um, <clears throat> it's important to be able to breathe well, and I. I went to Advent about six years ago, and that helped. And I'm actually going back later in the month um, to help you breathe. And I'm able to sleep more, about four to six hours at, at one sitting or one sleeping. And it's important to be able to sleep that, that time frame. Um, I'd also like to say, too, with the teeth, I've, I floss now every day. And um, it's good to be able to floss because if you floss often, you don't bleed in your mouth. And then you, it, you're less likely to get disease through your through your mouth cavity, like the doctor was saying. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's one of those things we should all do, Tom. Right, and we all go to our we all go to our dental dental hygienist, and we lie. Maybe that's just me. Oh yes, I, <laughs> oh yes, I floss twice a oh, of course I do. Thank you so do much. You know, Thank you so much, Tom. Know, really appreciate it. Do you know where I floss? I floss in the car. Oh, I, I was keep like, like, what are you going to say? Like, <laughs> no, not like that. <laughs> I floss my teeth. In the car. I like, honestly, like, I can't, like, I don't know what it is. Flossing for me is not that it doesn't work. I can do it, but only certain teeth. I use a water pick. Water picks for me are more comfortable. Those are good oh, too. Yeah. And, you know, they just, I, I, if you don't have a water pick, get one in your life. Um, I just want to let Andrew from Maine know you texted a question. I don't think we have enough time to get to it, but I'm going to screenshot this and we can cover it next week. Yep. It's about availability of medical records. So, Andrew, if you're listening next week, we'll get you covered. And I did want to put this up as well. A comment from PJ on uh, the live stream basically says, your teeth are a direct line to your heart. So mm -hmm. there, there really is a big correlation there between oral health and, and heart health. And, mm -hmm. and, and just oh, think about it. If your teeth aren't healthy and that bacteria is growing in your mouth and then you're swallowing and eating food and that food is going into your gut, you know, like it's. It, it makes perfect sense that it doesn't, that it affects your health. I, Humans are gross. I, well, <laughs> yes, thank you. It's the leakage and it's all the sputum and the, look. The leakage. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a question for Dr. Lyerly, text it in at 844-967-2789 or send us an email and uh, again, Andrew from Maine, we will address that when we uh, when we start out with uh, Dr. Lyerly next Thursday when she returns for our next round of public service announcement. Love your hat. Make vulvas great again, Dr. Lyerly. Bring us some. And let us bring know. Bring us yeah, some hats. Bring us some hats oh. and, and bring us some BP cuffs the next time you come to Waukesha. House call. House call to Waukesha. House call to Waukesha. Sounds good. I did tell Greg, though, that we could skip the uh, hernia check and the prostate exam for now. Then why? Why are we bother them? 
Then why even come? Well, I mean, are you are you requesting that? Yeah. Well, okay. the full service station here, I guess. You know, whatever. <laughs> All right, we'll work these details out <laughs> off the air. Thank you, Dr. Larry. We will see you next week. Have a great day, guys. You too. Coming up, we have news and entertainment minute from Pete Schwaba. When we return, we're talking all things sports with JS sports reporter J.R. Radcliffe. <laughs> you did it. Thank you. That's all on the way. Stay here. This is Matt Nair on air coming to you across the Civic Media Radio Network. Greg Bach, Dr. Switch on the board, coming to you live from our studio in beautiful downtown Waukesha. You can always join us. Call or text at 844-967-2789. Leave a comment on the live stream on Facebook, YouTube, and the platform that Elon ruined. Uh, just a reminder, <laughs> tonight, the Minnesota Timberwolves at the Milwaukee Bucks. The game is at 630. You can listen on locally grown radio, WFHR, our friends in Wisconsin Rapids, on 1320 a.m., and 97.5 FM. He joins us every other Thursday at this time. Milwaukee Journal Sentinel sports reporter J.R. Radcliffe. How are you doing, J.R.? Hey, I'm doing good. How are you guys? We today? are wonderful. Thank you. Bucks hosting tonight, and there's a NBA trade deadline. Indeed. Yes, today is the day. We're really in the in the midst of it here because it's uh what is it, 11:35 or so? We've got we've got till two o'clock. At two o'clock, that's the uh, official deadline, and already there have been some teams around the league that have made some trades. Nothing that's going to, you know, change the course of history, presumably. Um, and the Bucks have been very, very active. That's sort of been the the theme of this trade deadline: is that the Bucks seem to be in on every player. I would say that's not really common, but it, it sounds like they're just really in desperate search of some help defensively. They there are a few names that have been floated. There isn't going to be like a perfect fit out there. The Bucks famously have traded all of their future draft capital, their first round picks and 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 most of the assets that other teams would want are are kind of not theirs anymore as they have tried to improve the team in past years for, you know, championship runs. They don't have a lot of assets to give for future drafts. They've they've already they've already promised those to other teams. So uh so it's it's a tough needle to thread. The general manager, John Horst, has shown that he can work with uh, with not a lot of, you, you know, with some limitations and, and create uh, some pretty good roster moves that help the team. So we've got a couple hours here, but uh, I, I know a lot of people in Bucks Nation are, are watching attentively, seeing if they can land somebody who's going to, uh, to help this team out. How are you feeling about Doc Rivers? I, I mean, it's just too early to get a really good sense. And I mean, the whole thing with Doc Rivers that everyone is afraid of is, is his postseason track record. He's coached a, he's he's literally the man has coached nine guys who are already in the Hall of Fame and nine guys who pro, nine separate guys 
who probably will be in the Hall of Fame. Not for sure, but most of most of them for sure, and, and maybe all of them. So, and that includes Giannis and Damian Lillard on the Bucks team. He just hasn't gotten very far. He's won one title. He's gotten to another finals, but in 24 years, there's only I think only been one other like Eastern Confer- or Conference Finals. Even he just he's just continued to fall short in that category. So I, I think the concern is what happens at the end of the year. Not so much now, even though the Bucks are struggling right now. They've had some injuries. Chris Middleton just left this last game. He's probably out now until after the All Star break in the middle of this month. Brooke Lopez has been gone from the team with personal reasons. Damian Lillard missed that game. And and the Bucks are so so they're hurting. They're not winning. They're out on this West Coast trip, and they and they've lost four or five. So people are in a in a bad place right now. But I don't think that's Doc Rivers. There's going to be a learning curve. There's going to be a, an on ramp here. So I'm not. I, it certainly doesn't point to him yet. A uh, lot of lot of data still to collect. I still think right now he is probably the right guy for this job. It just remains to be seen how that plays out when we get to the important part of the year. Well, that begs a question then from from me as a not-so-in-depth basketball person, which is, it was Coach Adrian's first year, right, with the mm-hmm. team? What, and, and and when he was fired, they had a winning season. So the learning curve, for him versus Doc Rivers, how long will it be extended, and why are we talking learning curves when Adrian wasn't even given, was given half a season, then he was out? Yeah, no, I think that's a really, really good question and important point. I, I and some of that is is stuff we'll never know. Yeah. You know, what was it that made it so clear that midway through a season in which they were like 30 and 13, yeah. was Adrian Griffin simply not up for this task? And, and that's, I, you know, I, I think I think they basically are admitting they made a mistake and brought in a guy with exp- not enough experience to match what this team's aspirations are. Yeah. And more than that, when they, when they hired Adrian Griffin, Damian Lillard wasn't on the team yet. They hadn't made that trade. So mm-hmm. the team that Adrian Griffin thought he was taking over – is is completely different than the team they got. Now, one player doesn't normally make that. You know, one player does make a big difference. I don't know if it makes such a difference that you like. Well, we need a completely different coach. I think they just, you know, they they did give him most uh, uh, half a season to overcome this suspicion that maybe he just doesn't doesn't have the acumen for this. Yeah. And and then they moved on. Doc Rivers, he you know, he's not going to get a big runway. He's he's not, you know, if if they don't win a championship this season, there will be a lot of people who lay that at the feet of Doc Rivers. He does get more than a week, couple weeks to yeah. learn the personnel when he parachuted in midway through a season yeah. and, and to figure out what they what they were doing, what wasn't working, what is working, you know, how to tweak what they've already got. This is a tougher job than taking mm-hmm. over at the beginning of a season. Yeah. But Doc Rivers has 24 years of experience experience so you would expect that if anyone can parachute in and do it it's him i i do think they'll give him they're, they're going to give you know obviously the rest of the season they're paying three coaches they can't afford yeah. another yeah, one right so uh so they'll give him the rest of the season and to really figure and presumably beyond but uh but it is about it is about the playoffs and, and that is why he's here JS, uh, JS sports reporter J.R. Radcliffe is here as he is every <laughs> it's a tongue other twister. as he is every other Thursday go ahead Greg sorry no i i mean that's the other thing too is from what you know from my friends who are much more adept at this. Doc Rivers was working with the Bucks before they hired him, right? He was doing some consulting. If is that correct or is that a rumor they passed along to me? That that is also a rumor I heard. I don't know if we've gotten official confirmation. Now it's probable that he was at least and, and consulting is such a big nefarious term. It could, yeah. Nefarious is the wrong word, but it could, it could mean anything. Nebulous. It could mean anything. It could mean that he took a couple meetings. It yeah. could mean that he was sitting in on practices. I yeah. don't think he was very hands-on. He's been working with ESPN. I don't think he was. He was. He certainly wasn't in the building mm-hmm. all the time yeah. or anything like that. Um, and there wasn't a lot reported about that connection. So I don't. I don't know exactly. I'm. I'm fairly certain that you don't let go Adrian Griffin unless you have some sense that somebody of Doc Rivers' caliber mm-hmm. who is available is interested in the job. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah. you're going to be, you know, really up a creek if you if you make that move without having some plan B in mind. So I am sure there was a relationship. I don't know I don't know how deep that went. And I don't know okay. if it was extended to, oh, you know, he's here just in case Adrian Griffin doesn't work out and then we have this plan B. I don't think it was quite that official or anything like gotcha. that. Gotcha. Uh, moving and uh, so what it's 52 degrees today now in, in downtown mm. Walker show it's absolutely incredible and I think this leads baseball fans to have thoughts of baseball it could be zero I'm still and thinking you're still about baseball. thinking about yeah. baseball that is that is Greg's sport is baseball what's up with the brewer was what kind of moves are, are they up to yeah so they've made some interesting moves lately well <laughs> yeah. as, as, as <laughs> Uh, as everyone knows by now, they traded Corbin Burns, their their ace starting pitcher, to the Baltimore Orioles for a couple promising prospects, guys who aren't like 
top 10 prospects in baseball by any means, but but guys who will probably help them in the short term, like in 2024 and uh, and then and then beyond, hopefully. Certainly they'll be here in 2024 and some, whether right away, I don't know, but but probably right away. And uh, and that was a pretty controversial move in, in among Brewers social media because, uh, you know, Cor- Corbin Burns has had four tremendous seasons. He's a Cy Young winner. Did they get enough for him is, is a fair question. Are they giving up? In some way, shape, or form on 2024, he is a free agent after this season. The Brewers, no one thought the Brewers were going to be able to bring him back or had the relationship with him to bring him back. So they fig- it's one year of a, of a great pitcher, the team's best pitcher the last few years, for a couple guys. And and then you have to ask who's going to pitch for them. So they signed a guy named Jacob Junis, who's most recently pitched with the San Francisco Giants. Last night, they signed a catcher named Gary Sanchez, who has had a, a decent track record offensively and has is actually quite a bit better defensively than I thought he was. Um, he'd, he'd still be a backup catcher. Those two guys, the amount of money they make is almost exactly what <laughs> Corbin Burns was making, you know, above the guys they got back. So, like, they pretty much were like, okay, we got a little extra money. We're going to go spend it on a couple guys, upgrade in a couple places, pitching depth, catching depth. And uh, I don't. If, does it all come out in the wash? I, I don't think so necessarily, but but they're they are looking at it a little. They're looking at ways to uh, to kind of sneak through here and also get something for this frontline starting pitcher who wasn't going to be here after this season. My next question is hindering on a truth here. If it's true that Corbin Burns found out that he was traded via Twitter, and if that is true. Isn't that just the cherry on the Sunday of how disrespectful the Brewers really were to him in the past season, season and a half? I mean, going to arbitration for sixty uh, six hundred fifty thousand dollars, and you know you got one of the you have literally one of the best pitchers in the league, and you don't do everything you can to make him stay and to make him feel welcome. I just feel like the last few seasons were just ugh, just. The fact that he even made it through the entirety of last season is shocking to me. So Burns did find out before he saw it anywhere. He said he said he found out about half hour before the rest of the world, which gotcha. tracks. That's okay. These moves leak out so quickly, so teams aren't keeping a lot of people in the loop, mm-hmm. and they're pretty much you know they have to announce it pretty shortly after it's consummated. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, so that 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 is normal. As far as last season, and Burns had very nice things to say about the Brewers. Or doesn't you know if there is a lingering resentment, he didn't betray that. You're, you're referring to the arbitration process last year when they went, famously went to an arbitration fight. The Brewers won. It ended up being a difference of less than $700,000 for his salary last year. There's a lot baked into that, including league-wide implications for – and it actually come, came to pass where Zach Gallen, another Cy Young caliber pitcher for the Arizona Diamondbacks, just went to arbitration. And he got slightly more than what Burns made last year. If Burns had made all the money that he wanted last year – then Zach Gallen would have probably made more this year because it just sort of it's just it's all about comparisons with other <laughs> contracts, similar players, that sort of thing. Yeah. Now, if you're a Brewers fan, you're like, I don't care about the rest of Major League Baseball. I care about the Brewers. Pay your best guy the money he wants, especially when it's less than a million dollars, especially when it's not my money, and, and make him <laughs> as happy as you possibly can. I completely understand. Are you reading you. my diary? <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't leave it open on the coffee table at work, Greg. It's just not a good idea. Whatever. Um, I, I completely understand that. I, I agree with it in some respects. I understand the, the complexities of the arbitration process, but if you're a team that just can't compete with the big do- big dogs and free agency and stuff, make the players you have as happy as possible if they're amazing. Yeah. I mean, if even if they're not amazing, make them as happy as you can. Yeah. Ha- build a good organization, and then you know you don't have a situation where players like. Yeah, they said horrible things about me. That's what happens in an arbitration hearing. But you just n- do not want it to get to that point. You yeah. cannot afford for it to get to that point. So that was a miss. Um, the Brewers avoided all the arbitration cases this year, including one with Devin Williams that could have gone to arbitration. They made it a point to sign him and, and buy out his last year of arbitration. It's not lost on me that maybe that's you know a, a reflection of what happened last year. They don't want to see their star players speaking badly about this organization, talking about how awful this process is. Because, I mean, nobody wants to go through that, but especially when it's a star player, it looks yeah. really bad for the Brewers. Journal Sentinel sports reporter J.R. Radcliffe is our guest. In the couple of minutes that we have left, J.R., I think the big important question is uh, Taylor Bowl. Taylor Swift, yes. Taylor Bowl on Sunday. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think it's we should just re- I think we should just rename it and, and call it that. I thought you were going to ask I'm about the Puppy that. Bowl. <laughs> oh, well, 
that obviously is the bigger story of Sunday. My daughter has asked about that many times. She's like, are we sure the Puppy Bowl is airing here? The and I'm 20, like, it's... It's the 20th <laughs> anniversary, JR. I have Bally's. It better be on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, team we cut the cord. Can we still get the Puppy Bowl? <laughs> team, team Rough versus Team Fluff with the Vince Lombardi trophy up for grabs. That's it's, the one thing I don't like about being in the dog world now is y'all have to make everything a pun. Oh, stop it. <laughs> Don't crush and, and I'm saying that. Don't no. don't pee on my joy. Don't yuck your <laughs> yum. Life is rough, Greg. But um, I am a big fan of Snoop Dogg and Martha Stewart. If they're still involved, I have no idea. I am probably going to get more invested in that than the actual game because the Chiefs versus the 49ers is boring. Is it boring? Really? Why is I it boring? Find it boring. Well, I think I th- th- they, we just did this in 2019. They just had one of these where the Chiefs played the 49ers. In the I don't Super know if Bowl. you know this, Jr., but they do this every year. I know. I'm saying there's no variety here. Uh, the Chiefs have won a bunch. They obviously are, you know, defending champions. I'm. They're they're very fun to watch. I got nothing against them, and I'm happy for Taylor Swift and all her uh, her legion of fans. All that's great. I have no problem with that. Um, I'm just I'm just bored with the Kansas City Chiefs and the San Francisco 49ers. They've had a lot of success. It'd be fun to see Baltimore or, or Detroit. Yeah. Oh my God, we Baltimore were, or Detroit would have been amazing. It, it, it would have been, been amazing. Really cool. and, and I think you know it. The poor Lions fans. Uh, there was just so many people pulling for him. It would have been great. I, I would have bought a Lions hat and wore it. I would have. I would. I would so be pro lions. Um, uh, yeah, my, any, any predictions yeah. for the the outcome on Sunday? I think it's going to be the Chiefs. I'm not impressed with the 49ers in the in the playoffs so far, but I, it's going to come down to the last. Well, I hope it does. I hope it comes down to the last few drives or, or drive. That's that makes great theater, you know. So at least uh, I'm hoping for at least that. When we get into Super Bowl, two teams I don't care about. Just make it competitive. Make it a fun play that we talk about for years to come. That's that's all you really. Yeah, that's need, is that really. so much to ask? I don't think it's so. so much to, yeah. Jr. Yeah. Radcliffe. I'm going to be stuffing my face with pizza rolls. So what does it matter? Jo- you know. He joins us every <laughs> other Thursday. Thank you so very much, Jr. And go team fluff. That's all yes. I'm going to say. Go Team Roth. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Stay here. This is Matt Nair on air on the Civic Media Radio Network. Welcome to Matt Nair on air. Jane Matt Nair, Greg Box, Sweet Kel B on the board, coming to you from our studio in downtown Waukesha. You can always join us. Call or text at 844-967-2789. Leave a comment on the live stream on Facebook, YouTube, and or Twitter. Fun show today. Just flew. You know, we're fun people here at the Matt <laughs> Nair on air. We just have a good time. We try. We try. We try to have a good time. Tomorrow, Dan Schaefer will be here. We're going to be recombobulating on Fridays with Dan instead of our usual Tuesdays. We got some cool guests coming up next week, too. Yeah. We can, we announce the, can we announce go, the one? Go for it. For me, this is very cool. Uh, Milwaukee City engineer Kevin Muse, I believe that's it, M-U-H-S, Muse, will be here. And we're going to be talking about the city's plan and goal of creating more creating safer spaces for pedestrians for drivers it's called traffic calming there you go yeah there it is uh, he was featured in a video i saw and i was like whoa my gosh he's getting like national attention for the work he's doing let's have him on the show so we'll be talking to mr muse and i'm very excited about that and uh a couple other ones too we're working they got some in the we in got the some hopper. in the works we got some in the works um, I did want to share this before uh, the top of the hour news. This came out this morning in the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel piece from Alex Growth and Andrew Hahn. This is a Beyond the Cheese, Cheese Edition. <laughs> if Wisconsin was a country, Greg Buck. Yes. Wisconsin would be the fourth largest producer of cheese in the world. In okay. the world, baby. Okay. All right. Wisconsin produced more than 3.5 Billion with a B, people. With a B, baby. Three point five billion pounds of cheese in 2022. That is equivalent to some 8,700 Boeing 747s with doors, 
or 158 <laughs> Eiffel Towers. Boom roasted. <laughs> or 158 Eiffel Why Towers. Why do we use such ridiculous... Have... Because it's fun. We made as much cheese as 2.8 million versions of my friend Chad. <laughs> the most common types of cheese in Wisconsin in 2022. Wisconsin led the nation in the production of cheeses like cheddar. We have the finest extra sharp cheddar cheese, I think. The only thing that would be a close second would be Irish white cheddar. Okay. See, I have friends in, I have friends in Europe who think we're, our cheese is funny. Because it's orange and yellow. So they only have white cheeks. Yeah, they're like, they're, they, they're snobs about it. They're like, your cheese is gross. It's like, you've never had it. Well, you have to try. We have you've great- never had a craft Single? <laughs> That's processed cheese food. I liked, I always liked that they had to clarify that it counted as food. You don't like it when your cheese bubbles on a big pile of mm. meat? Uh, so uh, we, are, we are number one in the country for cheddar Munster. I that, love Munster cheese. Oh. That, Feta, which I would never have mm, imagined. That is very good, too. Feta is lovely. Limburger, oh, yeah. that's a more specific kind. Little little tangier there. Yeah, <laughs> little, little, little stinkier. A little bit there. Uh, Parmesan, Romano, and provolone. Love a good provolone. I love provolone. I do, too. Mozzarella and other styles accounted for almost a third of the cheese by weight. Produced in Wisconsin in 2022, U.S. Department of Ag says Colby, Jack, and Monterey accounting for another 30% of cheese. This is a great thing to hang our hats on. There we go. I have been talking to our friend Pam Yonke, mm-hmm. the fabulous farm babe. Lucky. Who Lucky. is now part of the Civic Media Radio Network. Heck and you yeah. Can hear her reports at the bottom of the hour, which makes me very, very happy. Um, so we're going to be having her on later in early in March. Early in March. Early in March, Pam's going to be back. She is a very, very busy person. She attends conferences all over the country. Yeah. She speaks at events. She's very involved with the FAA and all that stuff. And we love her. And she just brings a whole different. The FAA? Future. For, FFA. Sorry. <laughs> she's also in. She lives in Oshkosh. She's also in aviation. Yeah. Who she's knows? a. She's so Pam busy. Yonke's a plane. <laughs> Sorry about that, Pam. The FFA, Future Farmers of America. <laughs> but she brings a whole wealth of knowledge about the agriculture industry and what's happening in the yeah. agriculture industry. And speaking of that, tomorrow, Pat Kreitlow is going to be joining us. Fantastic. At 1033. I've met the guy. He seems nice. He seems like a reasonable guy. Yeah. He has uh, Up North News, WI, uh, upnorthnewswisconsin.com. Yep. And has a great article about our stalled farm bill. Mm, yeah. Which is still stalled. You know, I got to say, and I, I mentioned this earlier in the week, I've learned I've learned to love a lot of things about this state. And one of the things I've grown very, very akin to is the farmers of our state and learning as much as possible. That's why I, I really suggest if you can't listen to the, the farmer's report, it is on early in the morning. Yeah. You can download it as a podcast. Learn about the farmers in this state. Learn about what they go through. And what they deal with, yes. And what they have to deal with. People, city people like us, politicians. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a shock that they don't just throw their equipment down and go. And you quit. make your own food and, then and quit. Yeah. So yeah, I would. I can't wait to listen to Pam and Pat talk about the state of farming here because I think they are some of the most important people. Pam was Pam was soliciting for uh, stories from because again, city kids. I don't think about this. This is baby season. This is animal baby season. Ah, yes. I was like, and what? it's And it's all mud right now. Yes. And so she was just looking for stories on how are you taking care of your animals in this season of mud? Yeah. And what a mess that's got to be. So, Bam Yankee, another wonderful asset to the Civic Media Radio Network. We're so happy to have her along. All right. News is coming up next, followed by the one and only Todd Father, the Todd Alba Show from noon until 3 p.m. Thank you so very, very much sincerely for listening and calling and for texting. And I hope you have the chance to find some joy today and you get the chance to share it. Stay close. This is the Civic Media Radio Network. Have a great day.